I'm an FTR old school Democrat who is an independent today based on how our party is working. And that's what the Democratic Party needs to hear. You're losing people like me. This segment is brought to you by Eastside Weight Loss Clinic. I'm down 37 pounds on the program, and I lost most of that in just two months. Do what I did and what so many other undivided viewers have done. Schedule your free 15-minute consultation today at eastsideweightlossclinic.com. So basically, the city of Kenmore had agreed to this housing Plymouth housing project, but everyone kind of believed that it was for like low income families. And then they were led to believe that it was going to be low income veterans or the elderly. And then all of a sudden, nope, it's homeless housing. Like, nope, there's going to be people who are in active drug addiction who are staying in this housing, which is right by downtown. And that creates a whole nother set of problems. And people felt just blindsided by it. So the citizens stepped forward and they pushed back. And then the council decided, okay, our citizens don't want this. It's not what we thought it was. Uh, and so we're not going to do it. And that led Governor Jay Inslee to call local leaders in Kenmore feckless. There is a bill that I think is an important one. It's uh, Bill 2474. This bill would really encourage local uh, leaders to step up to the plate and show some leadership to cite housing. This has been a problem. Most recently in Kenmore, we had a site for over 100 housing units ready, set to go, been well worked, financing in place, consistent with local zoning, but local leaders uh, showed more fecklessness than leadership and killed the project. Crazy. So the clip I played, so the bill that Governor Inslee came out, because after this uh, project was killed in Kenmore, Democrats were like, we can't let cities do that. We need to force them to take these housing projects, whether their citizens want them or not. And they were pushing through this bill that would have done that. Thankfully, that bill is dead. I don't know if it's going to be brought back up next session. So the bill Inslee is pushing for there when he calls these local leaders feckless uh, didn't go anywhere. But in response to what the governor said, there was a um, Kenmore City Council meeting and the deputy mayor, Melanie O'Kane, was livid. We had substantial public input regarding the Plymouth project, things that did not come to light without our public. And we had to make a fair, unbiased decision about what was right for the future of our city. And we made one. Listening to our community and being shamed by our county executive and our governor and members of the Democratic Party throughout our region is really galling. Yeah, so I listened to them like, oh my gosh, Nicole, we need uh, the deputy mayor on this so show. So Nicole got in touch with her uh, and she agreed to come on. And I will say before we play this interview, she is not what I expected. I, I never talked to her before. And honestly, in listening to that clip, I thought she was like a red bl blooded Republican who maybe already didn't like the governor. Uh, and that is absolutely not the case. So how long... Generally speaking, has Kenmore been dealing with this Plymouth housing project uh, overall? I, I, we went to RFP, or we, I think we decided to go for an RFP in 2021. In 2022, we, I think, select, we selected uh, Plymouth as our partner to move forward with this project. And so all in all, yeah, about two years, honestly. It was like a, there was dreaming about this project. I have to share. I mean, we're a council that really wanted to do something wonderful for our, com for our community and serve people in need. Um, we recognize the needs for housing in our region and wanted to be a part of the solution. I think our original intention was affordable housing for families or mixed use affordability. And then I saw the floor plan and I saw it was for studios and one bedrooms. And that was my first red flag. I went, this doesn't look like it's for families. But then I heard it was for seniors and veterans, people with disabilities. The day after my election, we had our council one-on-ones with our city manager and our city manager and deputy manager, deputy city manager were there. And they said, we have some bad news. That was the, the word. Due to funding sources, this is 100% homeless housing. Whose responsibility is it that it morphed into something different? Who was calling those shots? You know, I, I couldn't say. The way I would present this, I'm just going, I'm just going to present it the way I see it. Sure. We had, we had a city staff that was 
you know, following council direction to bring affordable housing to Kenmore, right? In Plymouth, I was excited to have a city open to providing, you know, working with them, partnering with them for housing. And then we had the council that provided direction to, you know, move in this way. Um, I think everyone was working together, excited about the project. Where that miscommunication falls, um, you know, I, how do I say that? It's really hard for me to say this, but people couldn't see, or I couldn't see, that there were red flags about this project mm -hmm. until the very end. It was going so smoothly. And then, you know, as I mentioned, day after the election was around, when I started going, oh, no. Yeah, well, it's important to get to the bottom of and suss it out because there are other communities who are going to deal with this. And if it's Plymouth housing that's that's misleading people or whatever it is, I feel like it's really important to know because that's a big difference between affordable housing for families and then affordable housing for the homeless. So you don't know who to blame for that? I, well, number one, I take some responsibility for myself for not digging deeper. Hmm. Okay, this, you know, I'm just going to be honest with you. I have to take accountability to how I was receiving information, how deeply I was digging. I, I don't want to be finger pointing to anybody because there are people who worked really hard on this project. I get that. But at the same time, let's save other cities from the same fate. If there's someone to finger point to, do it. Yeah. Well, what I'm going to say is anyone that is looking at a permanent supportive housing or affordable, actually affordable housing, get in the weeds, understand what it is. This is a major big deal. I've learned so much through this project. I'm a real optimist. I'm a rose tinted glasses. Beautiful. It's a beautiful world. Let's make it as good as we can sort of person. And so with my bias of don't judge, right? We were in over our head and didn't know it. I give you a lot of credit for admitting that, hey, I'm an optimist and I wanted to do so I wanted to do this and maybe didn't dig deep enough. And I think that's an important lesson for people because I think we do have a lot of good hearted optimists who are like, well, of course we want to help with the homelessness crisis. But, you know, we need to look at everything that's involved. Do you think just in hindsight, with everything you know, that the transformation of this from what you thought it was at the beginning to what it actually was, do you think it, you were intentionally misled? I would hate to think that. I, 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 how do I say this? I really think the people who work for Plymouth care about permanent supportive housing and the work they do, and they provide an important service to our region. I also think they've had a hard time. This isn't their first time going through this sort of a thing. So I don't know. I mean, I, I think that there's a term that we that our city manager used. It was such a love fest mm. that pe that like our staff, Plymouth Council, were all really excited about this project, and it failed. And no one likes a failure. I know that our city was naive is the word that I would say. Mm. We didn't see we didn't see the tidal wave coming. I, I, I like to take accountability for myself, okay? So that's what I've done. I'm like, hey, I, I can see my mistakes in this process. I can see where I'm at. I know how I can be a better leader. And the number one thing that came out of this for me, I mean, there are a few things I could say, but I'm gonna share this. I am so thankful our community came out and shared what they did. And yeah, there were some people that were throwing everything but the kitchen sink. Actually, they threw the kitchen sink in with scary, horrible stories, right? Mm -hmm. And then there were, through the midst of it, incredibly valid points about our responsibility as a council and what we need to be doing for our community. And I had to listen. I had to go, wow, this is right. You know, when, when we spoke with... Um, with uh, Governor Inslee. So he called us. It's very unusual for a governor to call uh, local council members. Yeah. And I can see where he was coming from when he was talking to us, because you, know, you have to put yourself in their shoes, another person's shoes to hear. And there's a real perception of this word nimbyism, right? And I think it's really time for us to stop calling each other names yeah. and pointing the finger at each other 
and saying, you know, this virtue signaling, I'm a lifelong Democrat. Okay. I am pretty sure, you, you know, I, I, and our council. I had no, I, I had no idea what you, what you were. Yeah, no, I, I am. I could see myself if I read this story 10 years ago about a small town in Kenmore turning down a project like this, yeah. going, <laughs> you know, the, you know, rednecks, whatever term you want to use. And if, if you really look at this project and what a bad fit it was for this moment in time in Kenmore, it's not a never. We are going to show. And this is what I wanted to say to Governor Inslee. We're going to prove you wrong. Hmm. Our community is going to come together with the solutions that make sense. You mentioned a phone call from Governor Inslee. Was that before the, the press conference that I'm going to talk to you about in a moment uh, that he called yeah. you guys or was it after? After our vote. Okay. I think a week and a half, 10 days after the vote, I think. But before he called you but feckless. Before he called us feckless. Yes, okay. before he called us so, feckless. So I, I think that makes it worse because as I sit here and listen to you, you're obviously very thoughtful. You know, you say you're a lifelong Democrat. You want to do the right thing. It's not a no forever. Um, you listen to your community and you came to this really thoughtful decision. That was a hard decision. And the governor called and talked to you about it, where I imagine you guys explained the reasoning behind your decision. What was it like for you, Melanie, to hear him call you feckless? Well, I wasn't surprised. They saw it as something that, how could you stop this project? When I got to the finish line, I thought, how can I vote for this mm -hmm. knowing what today? There was a lot of money on the line and obviously political pressure that I wasn't deeply aware of um, to bring this through. But knowing all that, Melanie, and, and you said you're a lifelong Democrat, having a governor of your own political party who, who you even got a chance to speak to before he said it, call you feckless. I have to imagine there's a level of frustration there. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you why I said what I said. Yeah. Democrats are listening to their constituents. If you don't want Trump to be president, you know, do you know why people are voting that way? Because they think that he's listening and they think he's doing what you want. Hmm. We do not. We, we need to listen. We need to stand up for the people. We need to not say, you're a bad guy. You're a bad guy. You're not good enough. We need to actually be independent thinkers Pay attention to project by project. Look at the also the big picture where things fit in. But I, you know, I I just it blows my mind. It blows my mind. Eight is it? We are eight years since 2016. And an ironic thing, I'll tell you this: the day Trump was elected, you know what I said? What's I said, that? Inslee needs to run for president. I am not. Oh kidding. no! I know. I'm, but I'm telling you the truth. Yeah, you know, I was like. You know, Washington State's a great state. He's better than other people, and he's an environmentalist. I had all these great reasons. He's a good guy rather than, you know, someone who's a known liar. You know, there were all sorts of things that made Inslee like, and then he ran. So you know, I was like, yay! But that's 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 how much of a how I felt. Wow. Right? Okay. So, but for me, as a like, Democrats, wake up. There are a lot of independents. And, you know, I am going to get rid of this word, people in the middle. Mm -hmm. Independent thinking people who have ideas and values that we need to be listening to. And Democrats stand across the line, and so do Republicans. We are not one thing. And we actually have to be, instead of looking at how bad we are, how you're doing it wrong, and you think of what do we want to do and how can we work together? Yeah. And that is the way we have to move forward absolutely have to be working together, seeing the good in each other, believing in each other. Uh, and so, you know, this is like my happy note, but it's like my my vision, you know, like if I have my highest purpose, it's a healthy world where all, all living things thrive. How do we get there? Well, I'm going to start with myself, right? Now I'm on the council, right? I didn't know I was going to be a council member. You know, that's a whole nother story. It came into my path and that's what I'm doing today. But I have always believed in the importance of people speaking up for their truth. We have to listen. Sometimes we get a little off track. And, but listen. Yeah. See, 
understanding and commonality because you know what? Every Republican I know cares about clean air, cares about a healthy planet, cares about our democracy, doesn't want a fascist state, cares about freedom of speech. I think every Democrat I know has those same values. How is it that we are so divided when these core values that we truly believe in and want and desire and know we need for our future, for humanity's future, I mean, at, at a minimum, in a long-term view, I mean, we can, I'm not gonna parse things here, but we can work together when we look at what we really believe in. And that's why I believe our city is going to be able to come up with outstanding housing solutions and be a model for small communities. We learned something a very hard way. Yeah. A very hard way. We got stung, but we're coming out strong. And you know what? I'm going to share, we have this thing called Coffee with Council. And I went the other day. And to, to see, to meet people who were thankful that I stood up for them meant so much. And you know what? It was more than that. So at the end, one of the women, she pulled me aside and she said, I'm just so thankful for what, for, for the council listening to us. It made, made me feel like my voice mattered. That, that piece of hope that we can work together, that we can create the world that we want to live in. One step at a time. It's by being kind to each other, right? You know, it's okay. You know, we don't have to agree on who the best president is. We don't have to agree on best form of eco economics. That's a lot of stuff that needs to get there. But maybe let's just be nice and go, gosh, what do we have in common? How can we work together? I, I couldn't say it better myself. And, you know, I was, I, we've never spoken before. I've never met, we've never met in person before. <laughs> and, but I was still mad at, when I heard the governor say that about elected leaders who were doing their best with the situation they were dealt with to hear him call anyone feckless. But now having spoken to you, you're like the nicest, most positive person. And now it hurts me even more that he called you feckless because it's just not at all an illustration of who you are even after this conversation. Um, I'll end with this just because it's fun for me. Do you, would you want him to run for president again? Oh, I don't know. I Here's what I want. I want independent, I want leaders as president. I do not want par party hardliners in office anymore. Not at the Senate, not in the House, not in the president. I want people who can think independently and say, that is wrong. We cannot support that. Just because this industry is in our pockets and funding my campaigns and has so much power, I'm gonna say no, because I have to listen to the American people because we have to work together. I'm tired of, you know, Republicans not voting for, you know, holding up the budget to get one thing through and to get Democrats to work with them. Let's work together. We need to work together. Amen. That's it. I love it, Melanie. I love it. And I totally agree. And, you, you know, I know you're a lifelong Democrat, but it's there's plenty of room in the land of independence. If you want to join yeah. us, you are more than welcome. We could use your yeah. positive energy. Well, I, I can share with you a big lesson for me is that labels, I'm not into them. Good. I am definitely an independent Democrat and I have given very strong consideration to becoming a just straight up independent. Yeah. Can't believe I did that. I actually thought about whether I was going to disclose that, but I consider myself an independent. I'm an FTR old school Democrat who is an independent today based on how our party is working. And that's what the Democratic Party needs to hear. You're losing people like me. Me. My friends, I don't know how they, I mean, we all get along. But like for me to say that in public on air, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> it's not, it was not a, it was not being cautious. Well, I really encourage, I mean, I'm a Democrat, you know, I lean left for sure. Independent Democrat. But like, think about that. Losing someone like me who's very passionate about a lot of the democratic values and Democrats need to follow through. Don't just say you're going to codify, you know, codify Roe and not do it. Codify it. Don't, don't hold this environment over my head. Don't hold these things over my head to keep my vote if you're not gonna do it. Do it. 
show up for us, the American people who support these values. Melanie, you were going to make me cry. I've never had someone come out as an independent to me before. I, I love it so much. Um, thank you for speaking out on behalf of your citizens, um, especially against a governor of a party you've identified with, and, and for giving them a voice, because I think there's been a lot of instances around this particular issue where citizens have felt like they were left in the dark, they were misled, their voice wasn't considered. And um, like the woman told you at coffee, it does matter. People don't feel heard. And so the fact that you took the time to listen and followed through and were attacked for it, um, and you still have this sunny disposition, I think says a lot about you. So Kenmore Deputy Mayor Melanie O'Kane, we appreciate your time. Well, thank you. So there you have it. Kenmore Deputy Mayor Melanie O'Kane says she is no longer a Democrat. She identifies as an independent. You know, not that this one thing and being called feckless by a governor who she once wanted to run for president changed her mind, but just this feeling that like, hey, we're not listening to people. We're not doing what's best for people. It's not like she likes Republicans, but um, I, I, I love this for her. And I think more people who are disappointed with the kind of... Um, utterance that the governor put down of, oh, you don't agree with me, you're feckless. Uh, and really from both parties, this kind of like othering of people and labeling and lack of desire to problem solve. I mean, if you're frustrated by that, the best thing you can do is ditch the party that you're part of. Because I, I think they have to learn a lesson somewhere along the line that people have to come before party politics. That's not where we are as a country. So even someone like Melanie, who you know, lifelong Democrats, she's like, I can't do it anymore. The party isn't putting people first. So really interesting um, conversation with Ken Moore's deputy mayor, Melanie O'Kane. We appreciate her coming on the show. Mm -hmm.